Uh, hello YouTube. Um, welcome to uh, the last chat, part three. Um, and you'll have to excuse me because <coughs> I have got um, a little illness dwelling in my in my throat. Caught it off a friend of mine yesterday. And um, I'm bound to cough. But um, I'm fine, really. And I'm good, even though it's looking like my own test that I set myself is kind of showing me nothing really because it's showing me that I'm wrong and it's showing me that I'm right and um, back in May 2013 I made a video called something like Head for the Hills it's happening now and a lot of people believed at that time it was going to be May 2013 but, you know, what was expected didn't happen. But, if we think of the Bob Marley song, which is, um, uh, sorry. Let the man pass all the dirty remarks. There's really one question. I really love to ask. Let's get together to fight this holy Armageddon. So when the man come, there will be no, no doom. Have pity on those whose chances grow thinner. There ain't no hiding place. From the father of creation. I still think Bob Marley was important. And I kind of always seen Bob Marley and John Lennon as the two witnesses. I don't know why. But, you know, let's get together to fight this holy Armageddon. So when the man comes, there will be no, no doom. You know, so there's potential doom. And we've certainly had some things happen over the last week or so, a couple of weeks, you know, was constant. But, you know, a lot of plane crashes just recently. Um, there's always stuff going on. And there does seem to be, perhaps, and more people are thinking it, more people are saying it, some sort of poison in the air. And this is one of the things I felt um, is going right about what I set the test for myself. And um, I don't know yet, but I do think my soulmate has come back. But I, I won't know until Sunday. So then that would be something I'd be wrong about, but I'd be happy to be wrong about that. I would actually... But anyway, so I'm sort of feeling like I'm right and wrong. But I still think, you know, it's possible that by warning and other people warning and that it is possible that we have lessened the crisis that's required. And uh, made a 30 second video which I haven't uploaded just basically saying you know why would God have to do something so 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 massive you know it would only be if the people who hadn't woken up needed waking up and needed waking up with a 
bit more vigour. And so it's possible that if people are waking up from people warning, that the shock doesn't have to be as much. And anything that shortens, shortens that sort of doom and tribulation makes it less is a good thing. Um, and because I am seeing, you know, what I, I think one of the first things when I made this sort of prediction and because I was sort of trying to guess what God would do, which is always a bit dangerous and stupid because it's always a surprise. But then I sort of, after making the video, then I sort of started to realise, well, God's way would definitely be more sort of through each individual. And as all our souls are kind of creating our universe around us, then by God going through the individual, each soul individually will be making changes to their universe and the sum effect affects the world. So that is what I think I'm seeing happening. I'm seeing more and more people talk about God. Um, and Jesus Christ they're saying that too but definitely I used to get frustrated the amount of Jesus stuff there was compared to the amount of God stuff there was but there's definitely a lot more God now and I think a lot of the time when people say Jesus Christ they actually mean God they are actually thinking God and if they felt something through that medium it's God that they felt so, and that's what we want, that's what God wants, that's what the plan is, to get more and more people connected with God. Having had that feeling, can never go away from it. And, um, and then that creates a sort of a Mexican wave effect, more and more people coming into it. And... The change will be like, a, you know, starts slowly, but accelerates. Because I, you know, I walk, I'm sitting here in my belief system, quite happy about God, and then I walk out in the streets with other people around me, and their belief systems affect me. They kind of challenge my belief system because theirs is in line with society in the majority, mine is a minority, so it's sort of like theirs has that power of being in sync with the rest of the community but because mine is the right one <laughs> it will win out and that's what's happening so individually around the world people are more and more getting feeling God and spreading so the sort of catastrophes we're still facing on the planet are not necessarily worse than they were in 2011 <laughs> um, but I guess the accumulative pressure on society is growing so we might not necessarily see um, massive unrest with volcanoes and earthquakes any more than we have already but we might depends what people do but this accumul accumul accumulation of pressures like that because each one of these natural disasters costs the country that it happens in loads and loads of money and that's why I think you know, the financial system will eventually kind of collapse because it's just, at the moment, it's just kind of being invented you know, give everybody money even though it doesn't exist um, which is good because we need to keep the thing going you know, as much as we can, you know, if we can uh, if we can get through this, if we can ride this out 
But yeah, I do get the feeling that That the, yeah, that we're gonna be sort of poisoned by the air. I'm probably just feeling that because I've got this <laughs> bad throat. But we've seen videos of white, sort of strained things falling out of the sky. And there's been a warning and a prophecy, I don't know which one, saying about milky rain. And, um,. Someone's concluded that it's going to be like radioactive from some sort of nuclear spill. It's going to cause milky rain, and it and it could be that worst case scenario. I suppose could be that. Um. So I would disconnect my water, but if ever I saw it here. So anyway. There's, you know, there's all this going on. There's still the whales beaching themselves. It's all, it's all happening as it's continuing. It's not, and I ain't seen but Obama. And Obama was. Um, He was seen, he was, saw a video, I can't remember if it, it was around the end of September when the Pope was with him. He looked old, he's got a lot of greying hair. Then we saw a video of him doing a, he had a, sort of people around him, sort of women, and he was, it was a very echoey chamber. And it almost, it almost seemed like it could have been in a little space shuttle. Like basic and uncomfortable, but a space shuttle nonetheless. Uh, I don't know where he was supposed to be, but maybe the cockiness. But it, it was the echoing that put it off. It, the look was okay. But the echoing put it off. Um, and then there was a video of him looking about 10 years younger probably how he did when he first got elected and suddenly behind it his background was this sort of golden yellow background which I've never seen him speak in front of before and it could well have been green screen or blue screen or whatever but yeah looking like loads younger so and he ha I haven't seen anything of him since saying anything about what's going on in Syria or, or and so in my mind I'm thinking well is he on his way to Mars or something and and where's the Pope gone fair enough probably the Pope wants to go to his hometown and wear some dungarees and go and eat pizza but he's missing off the scene you know, we've got the Russians sort of just doing what they want, uh, as if they were the world power, and they're having a little go, and China sort of sitting there, ready, setting up things, making these islands down into the South China Sea, which extends very far away from China, but right past Taiwan, right down to Malaysia and Philippines. So that is... You know, they're basically being bullies and saying, we're coming in here. Um, and you've got... I saw this picture of the Chinese leader meeting the Taiwan leader. And the Chinese leader, you know, his face and everything, his anthropology, it looks very, very Chinese. But the leader of Taiwan looks like a white man being made to look Chinese. And I think the major thing that gives it away is the hairline. The hairline of Chinese people is, is different from, from Europeans. You know, it's quite... And it's not really something you can fake. You can't make yourself grow hair out to here when, when, yeah, when it's not. So, you know, it's very Western. Taiwan and Malaysia and... You know, and this is America. 
And what's interesting, if you want to see whose side people are on, look at the flags. Um, the colours of the flags. Now all the red, white and blue. They're probably all on the same team. And Soviet Union obviously was a red flag with a yellow insignia. And now they're red, white and blue. And China is a, a, a red flag, but interestingly, the, someone told me today that they have a Chinese nationalist, and that's red, white, and blue. But so all the red, white, and blues together, are they in the same pack? Then you've got all the Middle Eastern countries, and they predominantly have a green band, green, white, black, with some red stars or green white red with some black insignia the four courses the four colors of the apocalypse the four horses uh, i don't know if i've said this but also with tea you've got black tea red tea green tea and white tea i'm now drinking the white tea it's really nice so what's that all about me um Ah uh, yeah, so so I haven't talked about this, so I'm, I'm just blurting out loads of things that I just want to get down, basically. So on the um, 28th of September, NASA came out and said, found flowing water on Mars. So it's just been one statement, and it hasn't really been picked up on, analysed, expanded upon. It's just this one statement. But, you know, they're going to say things which are... You know, they're going to want to back up a statement they've made. Yeah, that's that's the statement we made. That's what we said. Because if they had said, we found liquid water on Mars, well, that just would have been one step on from the last thing we really heard about this, which was, you know, they believe there's Mars, there's water on Mars under the surface, and they know that there's ice on the polar caps. But they didn't, they said flowing water on Mars. So that wouldn't suggest a puddle or a pond. That would suggest a river. And if there's a river, then there must be precipitation. The water must be taken up to high ground and let go and rivers flow. So they're saying quite a lot. That's a big statement. And I do believe it's quite possible that the elite's plan is that they think the world is doomed with this black hole coming, which they don't understand. We could call it an invisible <laughs> presence approaching. And they're just going to hit Earth too. So they're going to go and live on Mars. Or they just think Earth's had it, it's run out of natural resources. Pfft, let's move on to the next planet. You know, not particularly. They think, oh, there's shitloads of planets out there. The future will be, of course, that we shall go and live on another planet. So this is maybe the mindset. And which I think is wrong. I think, you know, we have this planet, let's look after it. And um, make it nice to live on. And perhaps they just intend to come back after what they hope is that people left have sort of annihilated each other. Oh boy, will they be in for a surprise. So this is the, um, you know, the crazy out there potential of what is going on. And, you know, maybe some details aren't quite right. Um, but maybe they are. No. Right. That's the end of the, the quick paced informative. Now I'm going to relax. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a chat. I feel like um, 
you know, the stuff I've been doing, the meditation, the, you know, the feelings in the head and everything else, I feel like they've almost come to their, come to their conclusion now. It's almost like, well, I've done that now. I've done that work. And so, within the next few days, in my mind, as is the way I see it, I'm either going to be, right, thinking about the end and preparing and watching every minute, is no longer sort of healthy. And... I best just get on with some stuff that I find interesting because there are a few things I would find interesting. How long I'd find them interesting for is another matter, but you know, there's something I could get on with. Or it's going to be dealing with um, some shit hitting fan. <laughs> So, one or the other. And also, you know, about what I feel my identity might be, my purpose. I've sort of done enough of sort of considerations of what if I am, have I got this covered, and, you know being okay with, well, if I'm not, then then something else is, or somebody else is, and fine, I'd be delighted. But I still, I still can't think who or what that might be and what they might do. I, I've always felt that God create this physical universe with laws and that God would s stick to those laws and so that you know people felt secure because it used to make me feel s secure I think um, I did do an acid tab when I was 16 with some mates and there was a night which was a bit of a bad night and particularly more for a couple of others than for me personally. But it sort of fucked us all up a little bit. And so I used to get I used to get reassured by the fact that the physical world follows the rules. And if there was a you know, I never experienced anything that was like, you know, say like a poltergeist picking up an object or you know nothing like that I did a bit when I was much older but it wasn't an issue then what am I saying? so part of me thinks that there will God will never allow that sort of magic in the physical world and maybe we're done with the physical world, because I keep getting this sort of feeling, say goodbye to the world, as it is. The earthly things, you know. So maybe it's an end, so maybe there's no point even talking about it. Here we are, anyway, so there is point talking about it. God's just 
fucking brilliant. You can think, I say to lots of people, the universe is perfect, and they won't accept it. If you can't accept something, but you want you understand, but you don't feel like you've got all the answers and you want to know, just allow it for a minute. Just allow yourself to accept it for a minute. So I think the universe is perfect. Everything that's happened was meant to happen, especially in your own life. Feel it is perfect. Just allow it for a minute. God. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. That's why I don't like the verse of Noah in the Bible. I feel that isn't God's word. That's the, still the way I feel. God doesn't make mistakes. We underestimate. God. I mean, people still think, you know, a white man in a, oh, a white man, man with a white beard, old man with a white beard, is God. You know, that's still the image that people have in their mind when you say God. You've got to blow that image away, you've got to get rid of that image. Look at the world around you, that is God. That is God, that is God. Everything is God. All the animals show God's personality. Everything is God. God is that massive. God is that awesome. God does not make mistakes. And I like thinking... You know, here is God's plan, 6,000 years. Is he going to make the humans, his children, experience enough to go forward in a feeling way? Trusting feelings and being loving. And How's God going to do that? This is God's plan. If you've suffered and not felt joy, then you can look forward to feeling joy. And it was your soul's choice to to have it that way. And if you've had lots of joy and not known suffering, then you're going to have to experience suffering. Most people would, would have had bits of both. And there'll be more bits of both to feel. Don't, we don't want to feel negative emotions. We've been trained not to. And it causes you to go downhill. When someone's lived for 80 odd years, this downhill struggle has affected their body and they die. Then a lot of them take that fate of basically paying for what they've done or rewarded for what they've done. They start to get younger because they start to learn the errors. And that can happen on Earth. You can age and unage through periods of your life. But because your mindset is, well, my parents got older and older, decrepit, and as soon as you hit a certain age and you start seeing changes, you 
you accelerate yourself in a sense. Negative thinking. You know, health is so much about positivity. If I was to draw a picture of how I see the universe, I'd draw, first of all, I'd draw Mother and Father God. Father standing behind Mother, in their arms hugging each other. And then that would be in one part of the page, and then I'd draw this big picture to get the detail in. But there would have to be, so this would just be a round circle with the, the earth in the middle. But then there'd be another lap a layer. So you'd peel that layer and there's another earth. But that earth is where we go in sleep world. And different areas of that earth, if you like, will be different conditions to suit the people visiting those areas. And then there'd be another layer. And this layer would be where you go when you die. When you take that, you accept your fate, whatever it will be. And a lot of spirits don't want to do that. Or they do that and it's not, not great and they're able to come back and they end up staying back on the earth plane. They can be on the earth plane. They can be in the sleep plane. But to get on this plane, you need to... That's, that's going through the mists. That's, you know, that's a more permanent thing. Once somebody's over there, if they want to visit on earth, it'd be quite a thing to do. It'd take quite a lot of adjustment. And the first time they came to Earth, it says in this book, and I kind of can understand this, that they wouldn't see anything. It would take a while. But you would be able to feel. So you can feel through the dimensions. Then we peel back the last layer. And now we're on a dimension with God. This is where our souls are. This is where the feeling occurs. And eventually, after we've learnt more and more for years and years and years, who knows how many years, eventually we'll get in a state of union with our soulmate, so we're one consciousness, and then we're just there's we know we know about feeling enough that it supersedes any spirit body activity we may want to do. So now we're fully into feeling and if you like that's when our real life really begins and this is the the infancy stage which is why most people are running around like they haven't got a clue what's going on because they haven't Most people have accepted this fact and said, yeah, we'll never know, we'll never know. See, that's the wrong belief system. You want to spread a better belief system. The universe is perfect. So, um, whatever happens, it's live day by day. I think, you know, I'm seeing those small beginnings become, <clears throat> become nice, noticeable. <coughs> 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 <coughs>